Alright, so let's move into actually doing some stuff with Mapbox at this point. Um, we're going to be logging in and actually, although we've uploaded some stuff very briefly, we're going to basically go back over that. We're going to redo a couple things and just look over the interface in more detail, uh, get ourselves oriented, and then start styling, and then uh, mess around a bit more with data and some other things. Um, the key here is to get used to the typical workflow that you might go through in working in Mapbox Studio. Um, it's not necessarily going to be the same for every project. Uh, projects, Some projects you're going to have all the data ready and you're going to be focused mainly on styling. Other projects you may be focused mainly on data and the styling may be easy. And others might be some strange combination. But we're going to try to hit both of those in at least a fairly simple way. Um, just so that I don't take up all your time and trying to teach you a bunch of options you don't need to know, but rather just teach you the fundamentals so that as you move forward and moving with you know, using Mapbox, whenever you encounter a new option or when Mapbox changes, as they tend to do pretty often, you're going to be able to make sense of what's going on. So let's look at what we got in getting started here. Um, so we'll be looking at the basic interface layout of Mapbox Studio, which is pretty complex as we already have seen in just jumping in and seeing it. Uh, in doing that, we're going to be kind of having this thing of layers, and then they're connected to data sets, and that's a little confusing at first, but we're going to try to make that clear. Um, we'll be adding a style, we'll be playing around, I want you to kind of mess around. You don't have to do the same thing that I'm doing. Um, it's for the purpose of illustration. You can follow along making the map that you're uh, taking this course in order to make, or just pick something and play around. Um, it's probably good if you don't try to follow me exactly, but instead just follow along with the video and then stop, pause, try to style your map in the way you want, and then come back to the video and just kind of keep watching more as we as we do more and more. In my case, I'm just going to look at Mapify, um, their basic map that just shows up. It's kind of a black and white map. It doesn't have any labels on it, and it doesn't have a lot of um, complex styling. but Despite that, we're going to be able to see a lot of basic details, and uh, we're also going to look a little bit at styling labels uh, here or a little later. So, all right, let's head out to Mapbox itself. <coughs> um, you can see I've kind of made one in here, but I'm not going to start uh, from as far as I've gone, so I'm just going to delete the existing style that I had made. And um, Let's see, we can make a style just this way, just making whatever, but let's go to Mapify here. It shows up on the editor, and I'm going to drag it out so I have it beside. And you can see it's kind of black and white. This is just Amsterdam. I'm going to actually pick Vancouver. <coughs> cool. So we definitely have uh, some data here showing. Now we can see the streets. I think it's just mainly streets. There might be, as we go in farther, some uh, building data you can kind of see appearing. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about um, all the exact particulars, but we're going to try to follow this in just a general sense to kind of, yeah, make sense of what's going on in Mapbox. So the first thing to do is to just generally just pick a style that kind of resembles what your end product is going to be like, at least the closest. You might as well, instead of starting from completely scratch every time. So in that case, this light one seems pretty good for me, but you should check out these different um, styles and just take a look at them. I particularly like the outdoors as well as the dark style. I like using those and then kind of hiding different layers that I want for different projects that I've created. So in this case um, we can see that there's no actual label aside from this HTML that they've put beneath for the for the actual street or for the, the city. So one of the things we can do right off the bat is try to get rid of the labels. <coughs> and that's fairly clear up here at the start. So on the left hand side here we're having a big list of all the different layers that are attached in this particular style which is to say this particular map. Now you can open up they've been they have little groupings so that you know because there's like 50 in here and it's or more and it's kinda nice now you can see in bridges there's 34 so it's kinda nice that they're not just all in one huge list. So you can group up them on your own you can uh, do that you can see them all, and you can kind of see when you click on them, a bunch of stuff jumps out. We're going to be looking at all this. It's really confusing when you first see it, and you probably get very easily overwhelmed if you're not used to working in maps, and specifically in Mapbox. So here, what we're going to do um, is I'm going to show you a little bit more of the interface before we start actually editing. 
So if I was to click on one of these uh, layers here, you can see this area lights up at the top. And this is a few simple layer functions. You can see this one says duplicate a layer, group layers, hide layer, or delete layer. And that's really nice because if I was trying to, for instance, here is the country labels, that sounds fairly specific, and it seems to be large, medium, and small. Um, these look smaller. That's probably what it's referring to. If I just click on the whole layer group, the folder, and it contains all of them, I can just hide them. Boom. Or I can click on one specifically and just hide those, and you can see the smaller ones remain. So I'm just going to hide them all, and we'll explain why they're grouped like that later on. So you can see there's 151 layers, so wow. Um, so okay, now they're hidden. So that's a very basic thing, and I want to do that to show you this little area um, just above the layers because it's quite nice to see. Now if you need to edit the name, you can click there. You have to hover over the name in order for this editor to become clear. So I might call this um, Mapbox Course Map. Okay, there we go. It'll rename it. Mine's a little slow. And there we go. Now, of course, here is the main map. You can easily scroll in and out and do your thing. And you can see on the left, on oh, sorry, on the right-hand side, we have a little information about the current zoom level we're at and our center. And especially this zoom level one is handy because a lot of the styling that we'll do changes with zoom. For instance, you can see how those labels suddenly appear when we get a little closer. And that is to do with the zoom and some um, properties on these layers. Now, Mapbox also has a cool thing where if you uh, right-click and hold and drag, you actually can make it very three-dimensional, which is really cool. And that's that's one of the great things of GLJS, and you're probably already aware of it. Um, you can see you could actually raise these up. I'm not sure if these actually are contoured properly. The art is quite good. Um, they don't look like it, though, because it doesn't actually look taller up there. But some of them, you can actually uh, add three-dimensional properties and make them rise up if you have the contour lines. So that's pretty exciting. And there are a few more options over here, such as light and um, debug, that are probably a little beyond what you need to know at this point. Um, there's some information here just about defaults you can set for the, the map when people come to view it, if you're just putting it uh, as a direct link. Um, or you can just, for the most part, you just move the map to where you want it to start, and you can just, it'll load there initially. Um, and the history is perhaps useful, just as you uh, play around. You can see I was just playing around updating lights and stuff and not really seeing a lot of changes. Uh, but this is quite handy, of course, to have a history. Um, beyond that, um, there's some more complicated things we're going to be talking about later on. So that, that does pretty good for an initial uh, view and just getting set up here. Why don't we cha try changing a little bit of basic stuff to make this look just a little similar and then we'll get into actual data properties. So one of the nice things is, well, one of the things I got to do right off the bat is this has contour lines, this clearly doesn't, and it's just white. So right down here at the bottom of the layers, you're going to find the background layer, and that is an easy one to style. We're just going to click on the color here. It automatically opens into color. Just drag it over to the white. There we go. So that's white. It's still not really very much the same. Uh, you can see this is right here should be white, and up here should be white, but it's a start. Okay, why don't we try getting rid of a few other things. Maybe I can just uh, hide a few layers here. So, okay, that seemed to make it whiter. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so one of the nice, one of the things you should do to start when you're playing around is just hide and show different um, layers. So I can go up here and hide. Oh, there's actually quite a few parks around Vancouver, so... Okay, we hide those. Maybe we hide more of the parks. Okay, pitch. I don't even really know what that refers to. Industrial sand. Hmm. None of these quite look like exactly what I'm looking for. But why don't we... Oh, hill shading. Well, that maybe if we hide that. There we go. That's quite white. And why don't we get rid of the rest of the labels? Now, I can select a whole bunch by holding shift and then pressing the second one that I want to hide. So I don't want any of these. These all look like labels. Place, islands... See, that's labels. And this T informs you that it's text. So, and again, if you were to open up these folders, you'll see T's in all of them. So we're just going to select everything that has something to do with a T and hide it. Boom, there we go. Now we can see that um, it's looking already a little bit more similar. Um, and next, we're going to actually start styling the roads and that kind of thing and start making this look a little bit more like this map. So, see you in the next video.